All right, so today we're going to cover your vases with plaster gauze. This is the plaster gauze, and it's really important that you don't get this wet before you're ready to use it. So we have plaster gauze over here and the water away from the plaster gauze. So a big piece like this, to fit it in there, I'm going to fold it in half, and I'm going to cover my vase. The first thing I need to make sure I do is cover the joints, which means anywhere there are two pieces put together, so I have a cylinder here, and I have a sphere down here, and I'm going to cover that, and then smooth it on. Very important that you don't wait. You, you're not going to have time to smooth it on later. It will dry faster than, than you probably think, so you will need to smooth it on as you go. And then the next piece you add on, make sure your hands are dry before you reach for it. Be, be careful not to drip water over your pile here, because then you'll ruin that whole stack. The next piece that you put on needs to touch the last piece. Now your spheres have been covered with plaster gauze already. And this one is pretty solid. I feel a little bit of a spot right there that's kind of soft. If you feel a soft spot, then you can put it over the soft spot if you need to cover the sphere again. I need to make sure that this piece touches somewhere on this one. This comes down here a little bit, so I'm going to let it touch that last one. Smooth it in as I go. Each piece needs to be smoothed in really well. When I get to the handle, I'm going to go ahead and move up here. I can lay it on its side if I need to. Smooth it in, make sure it touched the last piece. <clears throat> okay. Now on my handle, or on my spout rather. I'm going to go to my spout next. If you need to have somebody hold it, you can work together on that. On my spout, I need to make sure that it goes over the edge and it touches the last piece. So I could put it at a triangle here, at an angle, dip it over the edge, and then make sure that it touches the last piece that I put on. That's going to ensure that it sticks on really well. Then on the inside, smooth it out really well. On the inside, I'm going to make sure that it, it makes a nice smooth connection here. If I want it to go down into there, I can, but it needs to make sure it's a nice smooth connection. Bring this over the top here. And right now I only have one coat on. So I'm gonna have to make sure I get another full coat on. Now I could just, I could lay this over the top and let that just drape a little bit so you don't see that detail on the inside. And that'll form like that. But I will need to put it be it will be pretty fragile until I put a second. And smooth that piece out. Okay, now between the lip, this is the spout, and because the spout is attached to the top, then it becomes the lip as well. Then I'm going to smooth it in between the handle here. So I need to smooth that piece in, but I don't want it just to go straight up. I want that to dip down a little bit so I still have the definition of that handle. I'm going to let it touch the last piece, smooth it into this side, and then I'm going to press it down so I have some definition between the lip and the handle, and then smooth it over. All pieces of cardboard really important that you cover the edges of the pieces of cardboard. I hear it. Okay, so notice how I have to turn it upside down. On the handle, I want you to take a big enough piece to wrap all the way around the sides. It doesn't have to touch, but you want to wrap it all the way around the sides. Making sure, always making sure that each piece touches the last piece. Okie dokie. I'm going to lay this piece on, and then I'm going to have to lay it, kind of tilt it a little bit, the handle, hold it like this, turn it to the side to get that to wrap around the side. If you need someone else to hold it for you and help you out, you can do that. I have to kind of gently press it down so it sticks, turn it this direction. Now, always make sure that you are very careful not to cover up your name. You're also going to make sure that you put it back in the same spot over here. Now I notice that this is starting to come off. 
I had a problem with this one yesterday. I dropped it and I had to fix it. But if I, this stuff is super, super strong. This is the same stuff that you put on your cast. If you go to the doctor and you get a cast, this is the same stuff. So once I put this on there, and no, you may not cover your hands with this or your arms. <laughs> no, you cannot give yourself a cast with this. That would be cool. Um, you can buy this material at any hobby store. I buy it in bulk, so it's it's relatively um, reasonably priced, but it's a little bit expensive if you go and buy it at the hobby store. But it is a nice material because you can use, you can do so much with this. You really can. So it's a good material to learn. Okay, notice how that's coming off there. So I'm gonna put I'm gonna put that down there and then. That's something that I can't hot glue now because it's wet, but I might be able to come back and hot glue that. I might need to come back and hot glue that later, but I just want to keep it on there right now because I already have plaster on there and see if I can just fix it with the plaster gauze. See, it's really wobbly right there. But so far, that's the only one that I've had problems with. I'm going to leave this one for today and let her finish that up. And then you would need to go down here, down to the foot, because the the paint's not going to stick on to the metal very well. Okay? I'm going to cover the entire thing, making sure that you're really careful to get the joints between each individual form, joining this together, both physically and visually. You want it to visually flow, but you also want it to physically meld together. And make sure you get at least two coats on. Today I want you to do as much as you can. This will probably take about two days. Okay? All right.
across.